Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we celebrate all the things we do while seated. I'm your host, E, here today with my co-host, Chad Lutsky. Uh, we are currently collaborating on a novel tentatively titled Planet Caravan. I almost said Sabbath, bloody Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's one of those uh, it, it's one of those Black Sabbath songs. Anyways, um, so we are a considerable amount into this book. We're uh, pushing toward 20K, and we are pushing toward the carnival today. Uh, hopefully, we get somewhere uh, close to that, if not all the way to it. I don't know what uh, Chad has planned for today. Um, I'm going to 100% let him handle the uh, the Shenna scene where... Uh, he go. He finally goes out to the carnival, goes around to the back, finds her pissing out behind the barn. They have their get uh, meet cute moment, uh, and <laughs> he decides. Yeah, well, it's the script right script screenwriter terms. Um, meet cute, help meet all the anyways. Um, their meet cute moment. Uh, so yeah, that. I'm going to let Chad take care of that. I might work on a scene today uh, that I've had in my head for a couple days. That's something that's like going to be like middle of the book uh, down the line, if not more. Um, I got a character. I talked about, I talked to this uh, Lord. I now I can't talk. Um, I talked to Chad about this yesterday, this scene, but I think it was off camera. Um, but that's the scene I'm going to try and write with the, uh, the strong woman, uh, that likes conflict is I got the scene pretty much set in my head. I'm going to get it out see what you think about it. But I added this down here. Uh, the character is Venus, female, strong man, combative, loves confrontation, leaves vehicle, trailer, whatever, unlocked so people will break in because she likes fighting and doesn't want to get arrested for beating someone's ass for no reason. So I'm going to work on that. Um, it's going to be interesting to get that scene done with Shane involved because it's first person we got to have from his point of view. So I, I like a challenge and I'm going to see how I can work that in to, uh, to make that work. Uh, I want to do that today, see if it fits in with everything else. Um, but that, that's the, that's the idea I have for the uh, strong woman. Uh, her name's Venus likes to fight. Uh, hello. Hey King. Um, and J-Rod, good morning. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Uh, good morning, Derek. Just saw you. Sorry. Sorry about that. Look at all these membership badges I got. Holy shit. I'm, I'm doing something. I appreciate you guys for real. Uh, da -dum -dum. So we're at, uh, 17,202 words. <clears throat> So uh, essentially, we're in novella territory now. Oh yeah, yeah. We're we're well over what I call my 15k hump. As long as I get over 15k, I finish. Because if I'm not feeling it by 15k, nobody else is going to be feeling it by 15k either. Eighty-nine. When uh, when did the Lansdale Carnival book come out? I can't remember. The freezer burn. Yeah. I could I could have googled it myself. I don't know why I'm asking. I do that shit to my wife all the time. I want to say nineties. Nineties. I'm trying to think of yeah. something that. Ninety-nine. Geek Glove came out in 89. I'm trying to think of a better uh, book for Shenna to have with her at all times. What about... It'd be cool. Maybe Twilight Eyes? When was this one released? Yeah, 1985. That'd be cool. Um, I've already mentioned Dean Koontz once if it, if it, if it gets left. Um, that would be something else they talk about. <clears throat> she can keep a copy of uh, Twilight Eyes in her back pocket. 
and since it's four years, may I, I don't know what what did you have in mind for her? Like uh, something this way, wicked this way comes uh, too. But that one's a little more well known and going a little little more uh, obscure than that. Or maybe it doesn't have to be carnival themed. But I thought it'd be cool to you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how, how Shenna got there. Like, like uh, does she did she have like this fantasy of becoming like, running away with a carnival or something since she was young or whatever? Um, does she? You know, she ain't, she's cringingly so the Ferris wheel dude's ex. Um, and I'm just wondering how she, how she got there, because I may want to do something with that eventually. I know you're going to handle all that stuff and it probably just come out naturally. But I was wondering if you had any ideas. Probably, I was thinking something that really didn't have anything to do with her like situation, but maybe spoke to. Her, more of her as a person or um, but I can't really I can't really uh, think of anything yeah um, let's get in there and see what her that. natural character development is and then we can always change that All right, so we, um, I go ahead and get rid of, I don't know why I'm stuck on this. Can we go ahead and get rid of all this uh, later scene stuff down here? Because um, it doesn't look like you used any of it. Um, why is... I never got into Brian Smith, J. Rod. I don't know why. Even his most, uh, even his latest one with uh, Samantha Kolsnick, I couldn't get into that one either. Um, I couldn't get into hers, that, and that's unfortunate because I love all of her stuff. I mean, they can't all be winners, of course, but I mean, I couldn't even finish it. It's not often. Well, she she only has two books out, but uh, True Crime and Waif are two of the best small press even like traditional novellas i've ever read um definitely up there with your stuff chad um Who's especially that? uh samantha kolsnick she wrote true crime oh, yeah. and waif yeah and waif was a uh, true crime was more your style like it was all like well they're both like realistic but um actually you might what am i talking about uh you like cronenberg right oh yeah Okay, so Waif is very Cronenberg. True Crime is very Dallas. So you got uh, that one. Uh, they're two completely different, you know, sides of the style spectrum. They're both 100% Kolsnick, but you got some Cronenberg, you got some Jack Ketchum, and those two books, I, the, the eclectic output so far by her is amazing. And I think she tries to do something different every single time she writes, and I think that's the problem with Bella Station. I couldn't get into it um, because maybe she went. I don't. I don't know. It just. It doesn't. It has her style, but it's just not an interesting concept for me. And knowing that I don't like Brian Smith's writing, and knowing I'm going to have to read his to finish the story because her, it's two novel novelettes or novellas uh, together to make one novel. Um, and yeah, I'm just not. I'm not feeling it. And it's Clash Books too. Clash Books does a great fucking job. Um, 
Anyways. I killed most of that, uh, but I did highlight some things that, that we, uh, I wouldn't mind throwing in some of the areas that we already have written. Okay. Just because I like some of the, I like the Washington Apple and uh, the crickets in here. Basically, you, you, you kept all the shit I would have kept, which is, that's I still find that funny. Every time I, I go back to read what you've done, other than the uh, the, the hose scene, um, it's it's been stuff that I was going to go back and change anyways. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like it a lot. Around, you're back. All right. Uh, okay, guys. So this is uh, this is for chat out there, chat, not Chad. Um, so y'all know I like my gummies. I like to I I like to be on the green, right? So I ran out uh two nights ago, uh, and I had been out for a while before that. Um, so I have a little bit more to go off of than just uh, just these past two days. Uh, I've been kind of struggling to get up in the morning, struggling to wake up. No matter how early I take my gummy in the day, I can take it at 3 p.m. That's the earliest I take it. I can take it at 3 p.m. and then it never fails. The next morning, I'm groggy, I'm exhausted. I can't get you know I can't get out of my own head. Uh, maybe even a panic attack or two. Um, but the past two days, I haven't had my gummy. I woke up this morning wide awake after only four, four and a half hours sleep because uh, I streamed until midnight last night. And then uh, I didn't actually get to sleep till about 1.30. Um, then I woke up at 6. I don't know if I'm doing the math right. I think that's right. 1.30 to 6 a.m. is four and a half hours, right? Or is it five and a half? Anyways, it, it, I think it's four and a half. But anyways, um, so I woke up this morning, ripping and raring to go. Uh, I feel great. I want to get in this. I want to get some words down. And uh, after after I'm done here with Chad, I'm going to take a break, uh, shoot uh, tomorrow's video because someone came up with a good idea. And then after I get done with that, I'm going to rest for a little bit. And then tonight we're going to play more uh, Remnant 2. So... Why is my connection going so bad? Oh, because I don't have. Hang on, I got. I got to plug. In, I got to hard lock my. Uh, I'm so lucky to watch both of you right now. How you doing, Supernova? Give me a second. I got to plug my Ethernet cable in. Right now, I'm running off Wi-Fi. Hello to everybody that's come in recently. Good morning. Uh, uh, I'm, Derek says, I'm stopping at an internet cafe. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can play together tonight. Um, so last night I got stuck on this boss. Um, and I was doing, I got, I got him down to below half health twice after like a dozen tries. Um, and then... Finally, I just got tired of getting my ass whooped. I'm like, something's wrong here. Either this is a raid boss and you're supposed to have multiple people helping you because it's a co-op game. I start looking things up. And yet, first off, yes, uh, most of the bosses are, they, they recommend you do it with more than one uh, person. Uh, so that's one issue. The same problem with Elden Ring. It's not really a great one player experience. You either have to use summons or summon someone else, unless you're just a fucking uh, precision god. <clears throat> um, so I'm fighting this tree thing that keeps spawning enemies, 
and I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. I finally give up and call it a night. And then I go in and I research it. I look up the boss, and it's like uh, this. You should be this level. Basically, it's a mid-game boss. I was trying as the first boss of the game because uh, you can go anywhere right off the bat. And I was getting my ass handed to me. Come to find out, it's a mid-game boss, and I'm barely like level two. I don't even think I'm level two. I think I'm only I'm still level one. So I have to find another place to go, and I don't want to look up anything else about the game. But I didn't want to get stuck on that boss if it was going to keep me from progressing. But it's just like Elden Ring and all the rest of them. If you're if you're stuck on that boss, go somewhere else. And I should have done that. I'm not one to bang my head against the wall, but I was doing it last night. Be fucking around, you're gonna find out. <clears throat> And sorry, this side of my face is all in shadow. I got my whole gaming rig set up over here. I don't have room for my for my light. I don't think y'all care, but it's annoying me. <laughs> y'all know how that is. R2-D2 in the Oh, you done got to the cornbread. You want to share your screen today? Yeah. Hey, All right. I just realized you don't have a hat or a beanie on today. I, to see I had a beanie on, then I just took it off. Oh, okay. That's why I didn't. That's why I didn't realize. Never mind. Too hot. Yeah. Can stare at my my bed head. Whatever. Oh, you're yeah. You're gonna have to yeah. like the next like dozen or more lines is about disposing of the <laughs> disposing of the shit out by the curb. <laughs> so if you haven't just oh, tossed yeah? it outside, yeah, it's the it pretty much the that this whole chapter is like uh, this the whole first half of this chapter is about you know his interaction with Rita, the weird one about the cornbread and then uh anyways and the he ends up going out there worries about where to put the put the turd oh, and, okay. anyways but there, there's, uh... there's, there's a lot and it, it's it's fine if you don't keep it it's just like it's like i'm scrolling down here i'm like I still i'm still seeing the dog turd stuff so it's it's <laughs> it's quite a bit anyways mm. uh I got dog shit swinging at my side like a handbag as I walk to the curb. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Alright. Alright. I'm going to leave y'all to it. I'm going to go ahead and take my break because I want to jump into writing and I don't want to have to stop to take a break. And I've already been in the chair about all 50 minutes. So I'm going to do that, come back, and then we're going to I'm going to get socked in, and y'all can watch uh, Mr. Lutsky as he does what he does.
in black. I hit my sack. Ow. All right. I love that we both have this uh, vision of Rita talking in truncated sentences. Take that shit out to the curb. I don't know if it, I, I don't know if you're just following me or what, but that I I love that we both have this. We yeah, we we both uh, have Rita pretty much locked. We pretty much got everybody locked down. Yeah, yeah. So far, um, <clears throat> I meant to ask you. I've been replacing Dollar General with just the dollar store, like a general. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. That's fine. I, I don't know when Dollar, how long Dollar General has been around, but around here, they've only been around here for maybe a decade. Like the actual brand name. Right. Before that, we called those types of stores just like the dollar right. store. And then before that, yeah. it was the dime store. So um, it depends on where we're at in the South because they opened here in Alabama in 1965. Um, wow. But uh, wow. yeah, um, they've been around forever here. Um, I know, I knew they've been around. I've been here since 95 off and on. Um, and I know they were, they were a staple around here. They, but Dollar Store is completely fine. I, I, don't, I don't have any problem with it whatsoever. Okay. <clears throat> we have... Um... I wish I, I wish we had a, I had a full list. Maybe I do. And for some goofy ass reason, everyone just like Travis pronounces it the dollar gentral. I don't know why people <laughs> do that, but that's how they say it around here. <clears throat> we have, um, yeah, ten years ago they opened a Dollar General here. Now we have twelve of them in my town. <laughs> Yeah, there's a joke around here that uh, every corner has a church and a Dollar General or Dollar yes, General. Dude. Yeah, yeah, we have that same joke as far as the uh, that and my town. Ha my town has been completely overrun with, um, uh, whatever you call them, man. The, the uh, where you go get your weed, whatever the, they call what? those things, dispensaries and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, here in town. Have, Oh, just the whole ahead. like we have one street that's uh, uh you know one of the main streets in, in our town that goes all the way through town and embarrassingly people from other towns come here to visit the green mile as it's called because it's just <laughs> i love it it's it's loaded oh dude i yeah. hate it it's you hate everybody it but i love the it. fact yeah. that they call it the green mile because that's fucking perfect that's a perfect nickname um it's it's horrible, man. It's, it's we, just we have where we have twenty nine thousand people in the city where I live. Um, it actually fluctuates a lot between twenty six and twenty nine because we have so much military and uh, people who work out of state. But anyways, um, mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, we have seven hand car washes and we have five mattress stores. We have nine dollar generals, um, and one Walmart, one Target, 
but everybody around here thinks that the car washes and the mattress stores are uh, uh, money laundering because no one ever goes to them. They're always dead and they're always building new ones. <clears throat> and there's even a guy on TikTok who's been running around going into mattress firms and uh, there's another place with a bunch of Z's on it. But uh, anyways, uh, he, go he goes in there and asks them if, uh, if there's any money in the mattresses. And uh, he's like, well, you never have any customers, but you guys stay open. So I'm just wondering if maybe you're running a, uh, a money laundering <laughs> scheme. And he gets chased out every time. But, I mean, you, you got to wonder how the hell these places stay open when they have no business. Not even on Fridays and Saturdays. They're just dead constantly. And yet a restaurant around here, if they go a month, you know, without a busy weekend, they're, they're shut down. Yeah, there's a... Yeah, they have business here, man. They're making money. And um, as far as I know, I don't know that all of them are, but we have population here is about 52,000. And they, uh, yeah, it's 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 weird seeing, um, you know, we've always had like drugs here and stuff, but not quite, just like the rest of the nation, but not quite what it has been for the past 10 years. And now that we have all this, Everything is legalized, and we have all this stuff all over. Every every place is constantly hiring because nobody's working now. Everybody's sitting around getting getting high because you can you can you can get a splinter and get a medical marijuana card easy yeah. around here, and then and then they don't want to work. We got a uh, we passed medical marijuana here, but it's going to fail uh, when they actually open because the deal is in Alabama there's no flower allowed uh the only thing you can have is either tincture some kind of spray or gummies and you can only have one flavor and that's peach um while you can literally go to any one of our cbd dispensaries and get delta 8 delta 9 uh thc o thcp hhc all these uh synthetic versions of you know uh of marijuana uh that are derived from dude that hemp, stuff is are, not good for you that stuff is not good for you. I, I cannot complain. I, I'm not complaining. I cannot argue that because I feel like shit the day after. That's what I was talking about. Those are the gummies that I've been taking. Um, yeah. and I've been taking them for, I don't know, about a year and a half, two years, something like that, ever since we went out to New Mexico. And I realized that the CBD stores sold stuff that actually, you know, work uh, instead of just like CBD oil. That doesn't work at all for me. Um and uh, we went out there, and I came back here, and I'm like, okay, let me try these CBD stores. And I'll be damned, they, they had it. Um, but uh, I, I do know it causes severe panic attacks, like heart attack. And, and uh, depression, too. Yeah. Um, so all, all of that, I 100% confirmed because I've gone through all of that. Um, but the, the problem is here, it's impossible to get pain management. Um, they either want to give you fentanyl pain patches. Um, because they, they don't want the pills on the streets, um, or they give you uh, Tylenol 4, which is Tylenol with codeine, um, and the Tylenol makes me sick, and the fentanyl is so goddamn strong. That's what they give the fucking pain, not, uh, not pain, but burn victims, is a fentanyl patches. And so we had this new thing where uh, street scientists have figured out a way to uh, pull the fentanyl out of the patches so and make it into a powder, so it can be snorted dangerous mm -hmm. as hell of course but people will do anything for a high and the crazy part about this is you know the government and uh the pharmacological people whatever they created the opioid crisis um they knew how addictive it was they were going to make their money they made billions upon billions so we everybody knows that it's public all that shit. um but at the same time they changed how, the fentanyl crisis started for one reason i know because my junkie friends, they changed the recipe for Oxycontin to where you can't crush the pill up. It's basically like a, a polymer compound now that's time release. So it can't be crushed up. Um, some people tried soaking it in Coke. Sometimes that worked. It'll break it down. You drink it, it, it kick in all at once instead of time release. But the uh, ever since they did that, fentanyl, has gone through the roof because fentanyl you can get pretty goddamn easily and they didn't change the the recipe for that one 
So not only did they create the opioid crisis with Oxy, but then they turned around and the government stepped in and they created a, an, a far more dangerous crisis by making Oxy uh, not crushable. Um, and so fentanyl blew up and now fentanyl is every goddamn where. Uh, but they've done every single time they tried to change it. They did it with morphine, dilaudid, um, uh, Lortab. Now it's Norco. Uh, they, they changed a bunch of stuff, but you can't even get Norco. Uh, hey, Viking, how you doing? Um, you can't even get Norco from like the pain management people. They want you to go to rehab, They whatever. Now, I completely 100% understand the people. If you find someone cheesing the system, gaming the system, then 100% they don't need the drugs. You know, but if people who are actually in constant pain, like me, who who need that and can function on this medication, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to take it. I'm going to be in pain for the rest of my life. I'm not getting any better. I've had five back surgeries. I got metal in my back. I have bone spurs in the middle of my back. I have compressed discs in my neck. I have two bulging discs up, up above my fusion. So three in L3 and L4 bulging. L5 is the one that caused all my... Uh, issues in the past, but that's been fixed with a fusion. Um, it's like, I'm not going to get any better. It's called degenerative disc disease for a reason. You know, it's, it gets worse over time. And they're like, oh, we can send you to rehab. Dude, I've been doing rehab. I've learned how to walk twice, relearned how to walk. So, I mean, one time when I was a baby and then two more times in rehab, one time I was in there for six months. Another, the second time I was in there for two months, learning how to walk after surgery, uh, relearning. And, uh, that everybody no but nobody wants to help people who are actually in pain they created a crisis and now that that crisis has completely blown out of their control people who actually need the pain relief can't get the pain relief or they are getting something that is so potent and so addictive that they're even worse off afterward um i was on norco for five years i stopped taking it um because my doctor literally said she couldn't uh, prescribe it anymore so she had sent me over to pain management pain management gave me tylenol 4 which made me sick but i was on that for five years i didn't have any dependency coming off of it now oxy i've had I, I have issues with that because it is so close to heroin same with morphine and dilaudid 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 is just synthetic heroin like it's the same molecule same build structure everything it's just synthetic um but yeah you can't get any so i so i had to find some way to exist without being in constant pain so i started going down the cbd stores but you're absolutely right but it's 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 kind of like a devil it's, it's a needed evil at this point because no one can get the stuff that they actually need um that you know that would help they got to go to you know the the synthetic weed and it's yeah it, it drives me crazy um like i can't it, it's like one or the other either i am in pain and in a relatively good mood like today i'm hurting like a bitch but i'm in a good mood because i'm awake or it's severe panic attacks and depression and all that shit, anxiety all of that the whole gambit of it even sometimes breathing problems uh like when if i do the vape i don't do the vape anymore but it'll make my lungs burn for days on end um and you know i'll be out of pain but then i can't function so i can't find a medium um, I've even tried Kratom, and Kratom is wonderful, but Kratom scares the fuck out of me because the Kratom is just like taking Dilaudid. It feels the exact same, and that shit, it's only illegal in like nine states. Um, I used to drive up to Georgia to get it. But, uh, yeah, that stuff scares me to death. Um, but I can't find a happy medium. So. Yeah, we've got a fentanyl problem here, and, and they, they stick it in uh, – they're always putting it in heroin and even in uh, – they got people making like Xanax, putting it in there. And mm -hmm. like a girl down the road who tried Xanax for the first time killed her because it was wasn't it wasn't Xanax. I mean they have like a I don't know what they're how they're doing it, but they're making the little bricks that looks like Xanax, but it's not really. Yeah, I wrote um, it, I, I wrote Wallflower because that year we had um within a like a a month or two period we had like sixty uh um um, lethal overdoses and mm -hmm. the whole town had run out of Narcan and there was just because people yeah. were constantly ODing because all of the heroin had fentanyl in it. Yeah. 
Um, it's li literally from my, it's this, these things have been around since my drug days, which is 97 to 2001. They're just pill presses. You can literally order them from China. Um, there's no legalities about it whatsoever. Um, and you just take whatever you want and you can press it into whatever shape of the pill that you want. The only thing you can't get is the actual stamps. So what they will do is they, they usually have a guy, a, a person, or it's the person making the pill who will literally sit there and carve into the thing or they'll they will solder on the stuff that's supposed to be there. But it's never perfect. So all you got to do is, you know, look at it closely and you can tell. But most people out there trying to get a fix are not staring at the numbers and letters on the stuff. They're just checking to make sure it's there so to make sure it's real. Yeah. Um, but I remember um, during like my worst my worst session of withdrawals, I was like, I'm not going to do heroin, but. I know this guy who can get me Lortab tens. So I went out, went out hunting him down and I got it. Them shits didn't do anything for me. Uh, come to find out, dude, at a pill press. And he was just literally taking some substance. So I don't buy drugs off the street, period, anymore. Not even weed, because you never know what the hell's in there. Um, but yeah, I found out about that way back. I, I it was the, toward the end of my addiction run. So it was about probably either November or December of 2001, but those pill presses have been around forever. Um, and if it's a drug dealer do that doesn't care about repeat business, they'll just put anything in that shit just to make the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sad. Yeah, it is. I love that you left the cornbread, even though there's like no explanation for it. And we're probably never going to get an explanation. Yeah. But I love the cornbread. I don't know why it just makes sense it's such a it, well they're not tweakers but it's such geek behavior um also another thing i learned from my drug days especially with cocaine and methamphetamines any uppers is geek math everything they do they will like tally and you know uh now you don't do this shit on downers like benzos or uh opioids or anything you don't do this on that uh, it's only the uppers, but it's like your brain's firing on every single synapse and you, you just sit down and you start doing math. It's like, if I, if, if, if it takes me three hours to do this task, but I can get it done in two, then I can come back and have another hour or whatever. And you're literally, it's, it's called geek work. Um, I don't know if you have any experience with that, but, uh, that's another interesting thing, um, that, from my drug days because i hung around with guys that did everything no i mean i haven't really you know i haven't done anything since 88 i think from 82 to 88 i uh you know did that went through rehab and all that stuff and quitting drinking was a little bit tougher for me but um my roommate used to shoot up speed and um but i don't really He's still alive. He's out of prison now, finally. But he's—I uh, I don't really have a lot of friends that I like hang out, hang out with mm -hmm. that are doing yeah. that kind of that kind of stuff. I don't have any anymore, except for my nephew and my niece. The one, uh, the meth head prophet I told you about. Uh, her and her brother are still—they they stay geeked up. They it, yeah. all the time. It's it's either meth or. Uh, fentanyl and i'm just waiting yeah, for a phone a, call any day now yeah i've got a, a relative who is partaking in the math and it's sad to watch I'm trying to find my fingernail clippers What are you doing? Cleaning out your trash can of bloody tissues? I see you, Stephen King. I see you. I love that story, man. I love that story because Stephen King's entire career was saved twice by trash cans. Uh, well, not saved, yeah. but it, it, it's involving trash cans because you everybody knows this. Uh, in case somebody is watching that doesn't know, King uh, threw away like the first couple hundred, well, the, the first little bit of carry that he wrote. 
Tabby pulled it out of the trash can and was like, keep going. Had she never done that, we probably never would have or been in a completely different, you know, character arc for King. Um, and then again, Tabby comes in while he's writing Tommy Knockers, comes in and finds a trash can full of bloody uh, tissue. And he has two tissues stuck up both nostrils, both of them soaked in blood, dripping down on his uh, typewriter. And he, he's just a word processor at that point, I think. But it's just it's dripping off the ends of the tissue. And she gives him an ultimatum, either go to rehab or I'm, I'm leaving. <clears throat> so I have a I have an idea I want to run by you. Um, I figure uh, Shane can keep the. Sorry to bother you in the middle of something, but yeah, uh, yeah. Shane Shane can keep. Oh, I just had another idea on top of that. Maybe this is too convoluted, but I'm not going to bite you anyways. So let's say Shenna has a copy of Telltale Heart in her, that that's the book she carries with her at all times, or at least a story collection. Uh, mm -hmm. But Shane has never read it. So she like reads it to him, like give it like a touching moment or whatever, like when they're, you know, really starting to come together. And he ends up putting the, the cocaine underneath like the floorboards of the trailer or whatever he hides it in the ground and we we can constantly like refer to that like i can hear it beating you know something like that i don't know if that's i don't know i feel like that's a thing that i want to do and maybe add that into i like, I like that but can but can those trailers i mean do they have a floorboard like that or yeah um so so the it, it all depends but either way yes um, so, like, when they use the the tractor trailers, like the semi-trailers, what they do is they put a floor in um, over the actual floor. And most of the time, it's for that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's to hide things that they're not supposed to have. Um, instead of having trunks and chests and stuff everywhere, um, they do that. They also hide things in the walls because a trailer wall is not uh, has some kind of insulation usually, especially if it's, like, a reefer unit or whatever. So we can do that. Um also, Derek is a truck driver. We can ask him um, if he has like any types that he would know of or anything like that. Anyways, but uh, um, yeah, we can we can do some kind of thing where you know it's underneath or or whatever, or maybe it's just in the wall. I I don't know. Um, but also the old the old old ones that like uh, carry the uh, the mystics, you know those those trailers almost look like they need to be attached to a horse. Um, mm -hmm. th those kind of trailers where it's it services as both uh, transportation and the living quarters and the the con not concession but and and the attraction all in the same thing. Um, with those things definitely they have you know they have the flooring they have padding all, all that stuff. some of them have carpet you know there's all different kinds of things we can do with that um, but wherever we put it it doesn't have to be in the floor but wherever we put it I like the idea. Of, and on top of that, once again, it's a sound, but even though it's a made up sound, it comes all the way back to, you know, his either aversion or, you know, liking of certain sounds and him being able to hear this is like, it, it could be another bad sound. It's like the thing is always present. It, that the heart's always beating. Um, okay. I don't know, something like that. I like I it. I don't know. Oh yeah. I like okay. it. Uh, all right. And to lead up to that, we could have like a character named, um, like when she's introducing kind of like oh that's so and so he does this or whatever um yeah. be like that's that's buzzard and he's like why do you call him buzzard and he's like because he's got that vulture eye and he's like what's a vulture eye and he's like she, you ever read poe he's like no uh, she's like you've never I, read poe and so yeah he's got that she, so she, she reads him specifically the telltale heart with the guy with the vulture eye yeah I like that. Telltale heart reference. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I guess so I got buzzard down here too. Okay. I added him to the uh anyways, it's just a, just a little note down here to our character list. So we got Shenna, Ferris Wheel Guy, Boobs, Venus, and Buzzard. Hey Derek, you still in here? 
I want to ask uh, Derek if he if he minds. I told him I told him I put him in something, and I'm thinking about putting a uh, uh, making Carnival Man named Derek. Buzzard could be the Ferris wheel guy, and maybe different people have different reasons for calling him that. Like she says, it's because his vulture eye. Mink, uh, Mingo, is that his name? I can't remember. Mingo. Yeah, Mingo. Mingo, yeah. Mingo does it because the dude swoops down every time a pretty girl joins the circus. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. All right, so let's do Buzzard. Let's move Buzzard up here. And we'll get rid of Ferris. Oh, and he's a vulture because he likes them young. Oh, there's so, so many. Yeah. He's a scavenger. He's just predatory. He's all that. I like that. Ferris wheel operator. Owner operator. That needs to be clear because he'll have a say in things. Um, I, I, th I think I told you this before, but um, so there's the hierarchy and there's like the king, the, the person who runs the whole place, owns the whole place, um, and everybody has to pay their dues to him. That would be Mingo. And then right below him would be anyone who owns their own rides, attractions, concessions, anything like that. And then underneath that would be the performers. And then you have uh, underneath that, uh, like people who just like work, like employees, like they'll run the concession stands or whatnot. And at the very, very bottom of the ladder is the roustabouts or the tent men, uh, the people who put everything together. Uh, that's basically the voting hierarchy too. Uh, the only the only people who can get things done or vote or have any kind of real like uh, that can alter anything in the carnival are the top two, which is the the owner and the uh, the owner operators of the rides, attractions, and concession stands. I'm going to do here is I'm going to go all the way down. I guess I'll put it in later scenes. Never mind. Instead of making a hole. I will add this right here. Dude, I just realized something. I wanted to call her Venus because, you know, a planetary, you know, a strong woman, all that stuff. But also mm -hmm. Venus Flytrap. I just realized that her name works two different ways because she sets the traps for criminals and crooks and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that shit. Sorry, I love it when shit like that happens. I'll just call her this chapter uh, Flytrap. Or trapping flies. I don't know. Yeah, let's see that. Oh, sorry, Viking. I, I don't know. You're, you're already gone. I'm sure you didn't hang around waiting. If you watch the VOD, Viking, I'm sorry. I just realized you left. <clears throat> All right.
Thank you.
<clears throat> Do we have a name for the county? The who? Do we have a name for the county? County? No, we. Yeah. I don't think we've done that. Morning, Lee. Morning, Alec. Everything's going well. Uh, no, just make something up. Probably like Marshall or Faulkner or whatever. I don't know. Something, something like that would be a southern. Oh. Mm -mm. No? Yeah, come on. I want to see it. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. <clears throat> Not bad. 
My wife wanted to, I, I didn't tell her what book we were going to read together next. I just ordered another hardcover. So that we got, you know, two hardcovers. Because I don't read, I don't, I don't like read out loud to her like you do. Um, to your wife. You just sit next to each other and read, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, so she wanted to see what book it was. I don't think I told Lee, you. Lee, that's normal. I just want to tell Lee that. Um, anyways, continue what you were saying. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, yeah, I think I told you we were going to read Doom and Key. And, yeah. Um, I picked it mainly. Well, I love the cover for one. And another one, I have no idea. Don't know if it's thriller, if it's supernatural. If it's I have no idea. And that, and I yeah. like that. So <clears throat> that always usually adds to, you know, uh, the joy of any, any movie or book or mm -hmm. whatever. So yeah, but they shipped it in. A, I got it off eBay for like six bucks. They shipped it in a plastic bag, one of those plastic bags that the whole inside is just is all sticky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, exactly so what you're talking about. What the heck, man? I'm sorry. Yeah, I hate it when they do that. Uh, that's why I don't order from uh, who thrift thrift books because anytime you order just one book, they put it in that cardboard with the sticky stuff inside. So that it yeah, seals. I've gotten that. Yep, I've gotten that before, but this is worse. This is just like a. Um, yeah, no, like it's like a thin, like a it's almost like a, like a vinyl plastic. Um, I, I know what you're talking about. It's it's the same thing as the as the cardboard or the paper ones, but it's just plastic. Yeah, it's plastic, and the, but the, and, yeah, and there's no padding, there's no bubble, right, or anything. Yeah, and it's just stuck to this dust jacket through the, around the whole entire thing. So it took that sucks, <laughs> it took like dude. three minutes just to get the book out <laughs> without tearing it. That's garbage. Yeah, this is me off. Especially, you know, these are places that this is what they do. They sell thousands of books. It's not like somebody who doesn't know how to ship a book. These right. they deal with books every day. And, and a hardcover in a plastic bag, you're gonna it's gonna get all kinds of dinging. Oh yeah. Yeah, they <clears throat> they, they don't give a shit. Um companies like that are just looking to I mean, literally just to profit as much as possible. Because each one of those costs like three cents uh, when you break down the cost of them. <sighs> yeah, but I don't really like the way, I mean, book outlet, I don't like the way they ship them either. I mean, they got the cool boxes, but the, the books are all loose inside there. So they're being knocked around all, the whole time, and they're brand new books. It is always nice though when you get a used book and it comes signed and the the thing doesn't even say it. like if you get one from like Goodwill. Uh, oh yeah. On eBay or Goodwill on, on Amazon, and it comes signed. That's happened before. Let's check this out. All right, so first edition Cold Heart Can it Can Canyon by Clyde Barker. Uh huh. Check this out. I got this for a quarter. To Big Bro Tie, uh, something, something, Clyde, something, uh, looks like, looks like Ben Wilkins, and then it's signed by wow. Clive Barker. But, anyways, uh, 25 cents. Yeah, blew me away, man. Uh, I, yeah, get, the, I get the, severely lucky. The, the signed one I got, uh, was. Paper Towns, I can't remember the author. He wrote... Uh, oh, John Green. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Fault in Our Stars. I didn't really like Paper Towns. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of John's, uh, but uh, I do like... I like Fault in Our Stars, and I liked uh, Looking for Alaska. Uh, all the rest of his stuff, I've just been like, I don't care. Uh, I don't know what it is about some, and he's also he's pretentious as hell, uh, in in person. Um, uh, I, how much can I say? Uh, <laughs> um, 
anyways, he's he's not the person that I had. For, okay, so a little bit of history real quick before we get back to work. Um, I, I used to say doobly-doo all the time. Down in the doobly-doo, you know, description doobly-doo. I got that from Hank and John Green, the Vlog Brothers. When YouTube was first starting up, there was three mm -hmm. people I watched. Uh, Buck, who was the news guy. Was called, the channel was called What the Buck. Uh, loved him. He was hilarious. I don't even know if he's still around. Uh, there was Phil DeFranco or Philly D. Um, and then there was uh, uh, Hank and John Green, the Vlog Brothers. There's also Guitar Man, but I didn't like him as much. Uh, anyways, those were the ones that I watched, and they all had this thing called. There was this. There's this group. I don't know if you've ever heard of it called uh, Nerd Fighteria, um, mm -hmm. and they called their fans and followers Nerd Fighters, um, basically being a nerd for good, whatever. Um, and I got doobly doo from from them. Uh, everyone in Nerd Fighteria used that, uh, and it just happened to be like it, it, that, that phrase is gone gone with the wind, um, but. I kind of brought it back and everyone who's like, I love, I love that you say that. I'm like, it's not mine. I always give credit, but, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I got a message from Hank green on one of my videos. And this is like, you know, getting a, a message from like, at this point in my life, it's like getting a message from Stephen King kind of deal. And he goes, love your use of doobly do. Um, thanks. And that's it. He's never talked to me again. He just left a comment. And, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, how am I going to tell the story without telling other stuff I ain't supposed to say? So I know someone in Hollywood who has worked with John uh, and to, to hear some of the horror stories while working with him, like, like the original ending of the book was uh, the main character for some odd reason being strapped to a railroad, uh, like in the old, like cartoons and, and stuff like being tied yeah. up to a and getting hit by the train. I don't, it makes no sense, but hearing some of the stuff and how uh, John is still to this day pissed off because the, the publisher made him change it. So when they were doing the, I can't say anymore, but uh, he, he wanted to change certain aspects of, of the ending of fault in our stars for the film. And it was like, mm -hmm. No, and he, he's just this big uh, diva about it. Uh, and so I'm, I'm not a huge fan of John, but I love Hank and poor Hank, man. He's got cancer now. He's been losing his hair. Um, I, I hope he's going to be all right. But yeah, John, uh, John, something else. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you more off camera if I can remember. But uh, it's a, uh, what was that thing? Like, don't meet your heroes or whatever. I haven't met him, yeah. but uh, here in a about him is like oh that's that's great but he also thinks that fault in our stars is as important as the great gatsby um and i'm just like eh, probably not but i'm just you know i don't even like the great gatsby but at the same time eh, probably not hmm. anyways talking shit i'm over here talking shit stop talking shit get back to work um
And I am booking, having a fucking blast over here.
You think Shenna drinks? No. Hey, hey, Sentry. Yeah or no? Sorry. No. Nah. No. Okay. No. She's she's like the. Uh, she's like the opposite of what he is used to. Gotcha. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I, that's what I was thinking, is I'm writing. Uh, Venus is inviting them over for drinks after the carnival closes, and uh. I literally was working, uh, writing, you know, I don't drink, Shina, Shina says. I was making sure. Yeah, not that she's miss, miss wholesome or anything, but. Right. Yeah, no, I get it. Waste 100%. Time, I What's the average? I've got this. Uh, I don't think we've already. <clears throat> Have you talked about exactly where the fair is at? Like the property that it's oh. on? Okay. Not, not at all. Um, it's usually just, just saying, fairgrounds or sometimes uh, I've got it on a farm. I've got That's it farm, on a farm of work. Huh? The farm of work. Um, they, they tend to lease out uh, farmland. Uh, yeah, like like Woodstock was on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, they tend to lease out that kind of stuff. Okay, well, I was just wondering because um, what is what is the average size for or for like a a large farm as far as acreage? I have a hundred, but I don't know what that. Hmm. I can't even. A large, a larger size farm would probably be 100, 150 acres. Not a larger, but like a a mid size farm. Would be about a hundred to one hundred. So hundred is good then. Okay. Yeah, hundred's fine. Um, yeah. The people always their minds are blown when they find out I uh, I own two hundred fifty acres, but it just doesn't feel that big to me. I mean, it, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong; it's a lot of fucking land, and the the place we live we live in a clearing that's an acre uh, long. It's a it's an acre itself. And then there's, you know, 249 extra out there. But uh, it doesn't feel that long, especially if you're in a car. Like, I can go around my entire property in about five minutes. Um, I guess that is long. I don't know what I'm talking about. Never mind. I guess it is big. But it just doesn't feel that way because it's mostly trees. So mm -hmm. if it was wide open space, like, you know, fucking Montana, I could, I probably, like, it, it would feel bigger. But it's so dense out here. It, aside from all the dead trees from the paper mill runoff. I just realized this guy's got to eat. 
Yeah, I gotta write a scene in here where he eats real quick. You gotta do what? So, oh, uh, Shane. Shane? Yeah, because he got up early, he dug a freaking huge hole for a 16 year old kid, got whooped on, <clears throat> and then uh, still hasn't eaten. So, I forgot about that. You still got some of that pizza left. I'll just have him grab some slices.
notice you like the word softly. Like the word what? You like the word softly. Softly? Oh yeah, it's a crutch word. Hundred uh, percent. Tenderly, gently, softly. I I use some kind of variation of that, but usually in my first drafts, my roughs, uh, there's it's all softly. <laughs> <laughs> None of it's needed, but it goes in there anyways. Everyone, I, I I'm like I'm like Oprah. Everyone gets a softly. <laughs> I also noticed not not from this draft, but from reading, you know, like four of your other books. Another. Uh, I mean, we all kind of have our go-tos. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of mine's is her eyes were saucer wide or something like that. Um, yeah, I one use of yours owl is, wide. One of yours is, uh, it, it's not a question. Yeah, yeah, I, use, I do it or all the time. Um, yeah, I, I use that all the time because I, like uh, I like that structure. I usually keep those in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh Another one of mine is, uh, oh, Gregor actually pointed this one out. Like five of my books, at least five, until he pointed it out, all of them had a someone with an apple-shaped ass. Um, and Gregor pointed that out. He's like, uh, let me guess. She, she, I was talking about a character, and he's like, let me guess. She has an apple-shaped ass. I'm like, What? He goes, he goes, dude, like five of your books, like Bay's End, Sound of Broken Ribs, like all these books have an apple-shaped ass, not apple-bottomed or anything, apple-shaped ass. I'm like, God, well, I do love an apple-shaped ass, so whatever. That's like my favorite thing in the world. Anyways, but that's another one. I, anytime I write about ass, it's usually apple-shaped. That's funny. Uh, the big, I think one of the biggest problems I had with cutting words. Now, this is an actual error and not a crutch word, but uh, should have, could have, would have. Um, I would always write of instead of ve. Uh, yeah. And the the editor that I worked with on Bay's End is the only editor that had caught it up until that point. So all of my books, all my traditionally published books, all that had a uh, had should have, could have, would have instead of you know, VE should have, could have, would have. Um, anyways, uh, and I, that was the most embarrassing moment when uh, when she told me it was wrong. I had to go Google it. I'm like, is it should have or should have? Uh, and I like my heart broke because I had published like 20 books up until that point. And, and I was like, God damn, I've been doing this wrong this entire time. And uh, I still ended up leaving some of them in. But the book I found out about, like I said, was Bay's End when she was working on that. And that is the only review, the only book with reviews that have ever mentioned it. None of my other books before that, no one's mentioned it. But in that book, reviews for that one, people mentioned it. It's very weird. Perfect. All right. I'm about to take a break. I'll probably take a break when you get back. I'm currently 30 pages into my middle grade novel. I always hit ruts, though. I get it. Um, 
Um, yeah, uh, guys, it, here's a if if either one of you or anybody is in here, stop being so fucking hard on yourselves. Like it, the one of the reasons why you're in a rut is because you think you're in a rut. I know that's like it sounds like some psychology bullshit, but um, and and Chad will back this up when you get well. He's, he's back now, but Chad will back this up. It's like writer's block is a man-made concept. There's no such thing. And the more you think about it, the more you linger on that kind of bullshit, like I'm in a rut, I got writer's block, so on and so forth, the more you're going to be blocked. Because if you're, if you are, you're literally convincing yourself that you can't do something that you obviously can do. So. <clears throat> It's an MG novel. Middle grade. No, oh, I'm thinking Magic yeah. the Gathering. No, no, that'd be cool though. Oh, come on, neck meat.
<laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you loved it, Sentry. <clears throat> You're not teasing me. It doesn't bother me at all when someone likes something I don't like or someone hates something I like. Bad, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I just want I just wanted to say the scene that I'm you asked me where the carnival is, the scene that I'm writing is gonna be after they've left the the place. Um gonna be deeper into the book. So they'll already be on the road. I'm I'm not making any mention to where we're at really in, in here. We can add that later when we know where we're gonna be. Okay. I'm gonna take a break. I know okay. you're. I know you're mm -hmm. probably lunch. So, looking forward to Holly, who's become Stephen King's fictional press. I'm glad. I hope. I hope there's no no exaggeration. I hope there's like ten more books from Holly. I wouldn't care if he spent the rest of his career. He's given us so much uh, di diversity and eclectic read. So many eclectic reads over the years. I would have no problem if he only wrote about Holly, like most people write about, like fucking detectives and shit. Anyways, I'll be back, guys. Uh, probably 10, 15 minutes. I've been down okay. for a while.
Okie dokie. I'm back. <sighs> Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Okie dokie. I'm back. Yeah, Alec, uh, Holly showing up in the middle of The Outsider was damn near my favorite part. I didn't read any uh, any reviews or anything. Um, I went into the book completely blind. And uh, I literally, like, screamed when uh, I was like, holy shit, it's Holly! One of the funniest responses to any... Um, any Goodreads post I've ever seen uh, was Sadie Sadie Hartman, uh, Mother of Horror, was reading The Outsider, and she did a, uh, you know, the updates while you're reading? She did the update for the page number, and in the caption, she just put Holly, because that's the name of the section. And <laughs> she got a reply that said, um, spoilers, all caps. <laughs> Sadie went on a full ass Twitter rant um, about that damn comment, and I thought it was funny. I didn't even I don't I don't think the person was even like serious. They might have been, but uh, it it struck me as sarcastic in tone. shit if you cut this i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna kill you <laughs> sorry hang on check, check this out real quick uh talking about venus the strong woman she's seven foot she's seven foot at least and built like a yield sign most of her is legs and she's got a pubic mound that bulges from her bikini bottom like she's packing the same thing i am she's not though because there's a split decision between her legs <laughs> 
Me and you gonna fight? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, think Shane would accept a beer? No, I think it's probably just a reminder of, I mean, he drank that one at that one night, but it was kind of a tense. Right. It's, I just think it's not a, <clears throat> it's not even just a big deal. You know, it's like, it's not a, he doesn't have your normal upbringing. So the idea of partying and stuff, that part of him feels like more mature than, than most. Okay. Like it just seems such a trivial part of 
of, you know, for most of us growing up, you know, when we have our first beer, or smoke cigarettes, first joint or whatever, it's kind of a, a big deal. And uh, for him, it's just like, stop.
<laughs> I think you're going to get a kick out of this since you like the Hershey kiss and the cornbread. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Shane is sitting across from Venus uh, and she's talking to him and he's like, he's just like staring. Anyways, here, there's the scene. Uh, Venus is bare ass naked in the chair across from me. I'm sitting at, I'm staring at her considerable chest which is akin to an optical illusion, what with how her breasts are deflated balloons resting on rock-hard pectoral muscles. A gallon of, jo of Johnson's baby oil and a family-sized jar of generic Vaseline sit like centerpieces on the tabletop. She's rubbing baby oil into her neck and arms while she talks, and my heart's pounding in fearful anticipation of what she's going to use the petroleum jelly on. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so fucking weird. Anyways... That one I won't be mad to be changed, but I do like the uh, I do like the visual image. Uh, <clears throat> Venus. My favorite fantasy series of all time, uh, The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. Um, I haven't, I I think Marlon James' Dark Star trilogy is going to usurp that, but I haven't read the second book yet. But the first, and it's funny because all three of the books in that series are all going to be the same time frame, the same stuff, just told from a different character's perspective. All three books cover the same amount of time in the same series of events but it's each character's different viewpoint of the that stuff um so i'm not sure it's going to end up being as high on my list as uh as leo's stuff but uh right now it it, it is um because that first book uh, black leopard red wolf is better than the entire dandelion dynasty trilogy but I want to finish it before I settle on that. But right now, Ken Liu's Dandelion Dynasty, starting with The Grace of Kings. There's one more book coming out. Um, there's just going to be five in total.
God damn, mini fridges were invented in 1920. It's crazy.
Dude, I'm having too much fun over here. <clears throat> oh, Jesus Christ, I'm having way too much fucking fun. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> What's my opinion of Salem's Lot? It's a good book. Probably the best vampire book I've ever ever read, ex aside from uh, Let the Right No, Let Me In. What's the original one called? I think it's Let Me In, or is it Let the Right One In? It's one of the other. I think the movie's called I think Let it's Me Let In. Let the Right One In. Yeah, Let the Right One In is the book, I believe. <clears throat> the, the original movie is that too it's called the same thing yeah All right, I'm tapped out. All right. You gonna keep writing? Uh, hang on. I at least, least want to finish this. Ooh. Um, I at least want to finish this thought, but uh.
So Okay. All right. So, all right guys, we're done. Um probably going to chat for a while off camera, but anyways, uh or maybe not, I don't know. Uh Sorry, I'm still in writing mode. My brain is still I like I literally want to say aloud what I had coming next, but I do at least need to get off my butt. Um anywho, thanks for joining us as always. Uh Chad, anything you want to say before we go? No. Love your shirt, by the way. I just realized Thanks. what it was. Your hair was covering it. And when you leaned back, I finally saw the cover. Okay. Uh, anyways, see y'all tomorrow, 9 a.m., same bat time, same bat channel. But until then, all hail the Chizzy. <laughs>